That's really what this multi-billion dollar industry is all about anyway, isn't it? Inner beauty. In this video, I want to look at a specific aspect of world building, creating a value system. While most fictional worlds have some kind of value system, these values aren't always that relevant to the story. But in The Devil Wears Prada, the value system of Runway is not only shown from the very first scene, it also provides the main source of conflict for the story. I'm Evan Westman, and this is an interior analysis of The Devil Wears Prada. In any story, there is some degree of world building that must be done by the writer. It's more obvious in fantastical stories, but it's still important to orient the audience in more realistic settings, like a historical time, a school, or even a family's home. In the case of The Devil Wears Prada, Runway is a setting that is grounded in reality, but is still foreign to Andy, and likely to most of the audience. But the world building of Runway isn't just about showing a bunch of people in expensive clothes, it's also about showing what everyone at Runway values. A value, as I'm defining it here, is a principle that guides people's actions and shapes the world that they live in. Something like obedience, strength, intelligence, caution, or distrust. By the way, that's just how I'm choosing to define it, it's not a universal definition. The factions in Divergent or the houses in Hogwarts are two examples of settings where the values at play are pretty obvious, but in most other cases, values are implied rather than stated. So what is valued at Runway? Most apparent is a dedication not just to fashion, but to a higher level of fashion. You have no style or sense of fashion. Well, um, I think that depends on what you're- No, no, that wasn't a question. Tied in with that is physical appearance, and by extension, diet. So none of the girls here eat anything? Not since two became the new four, and zero became the new two. Well, I'm a six. Which is the new 14. Diligence is a useful skill, but as Andy discovers, the work that she does is only appreciated if she gets results. So diligence, while useful, is not actually valued. And above all else, obedience of Miranda Priestley is valued. So now let's look at how those values manifest themselves in Runway, and how the story highlights them to the audience. Possibly the most obvious evidence of values are rules. A rule, in this case, is a specific action with specific consequences. They're pretty easy to spot because they usually have to be explicitly spelled out. The phone must be answered every single time it rings. It's you may never ask Miranda anything. One time an assistant left the desk because you know, she sliced her hand open with a letter opener and Miranda missed Lagerfeld just before he boarded a 17-hour flight to Australia. She now works at TV Guide. Man the desk at all times, got it. If they aren't spelled out, they're still usually shown pretty obviously. What exactly is she wearing? <laughs> her grandmother's skirt. <laughs> But in all of these cases, the rules are derived from how much appearance and obedience are valued at Runway. And breaking these rules suggests a lack of belief in those values. In short, rules are values put into action. Now I want to quickly point out that not all rules are rooted in values. Things like the rules of the dream world in Inception, or the rules around silence in a quiet place, are just natural boundaries that can't be crossed and have nothing to do with values. Next is the presence of an authority figure. Before we even meet Miranda, it's pretty obvious that she is the authority figure that everyone answers to. But while Miranda is the one who is laying down the law, she isn't the one who creates those laws. If we were to compare Runway to a religion, Miranda might seem at first glance like a god or a divine being that everyone worships. But in reality, the fashion industry itself is the god, and Miranda is more like the high priest or the pope that is the most devoted servant of that god. In Nigel and Emily, we also have characters who are devoted believers in the value system. These characters have no real authority, but willingly devote themselves to the values that are impressed upon them. Don't you know that you were working at the place that published some of the greatest artists of the century? Halston, Lagerfeld, De La Renta. And what they did, what they created, was greater than art. Because you live your life in it. We see both Emily and Nigel stretch themselves to the limits, and beyond, to do their jobs. But despite these struggles, they are in the world that they love and in positions that are either their dream job or seemingly viable pathways to that dream job. I love my job, I love my job, I love my job. Importantly, the authority figure and followers are serving a higher ideal by adhering to the value system. 
The higher ideal is a nebulous concept that followers devote themselves to and revere, without necessarily understanding it. At Runway, this ideal is high fashion. And, as Miranda points out in her monologue, it's an ideal that might be more worthy of respect than outsiders might think. That blue represents millions of dollars and countless jobs. And it's sort of comical how you think that you've made a choice that exempts you from the fashion industry when, in fact, you're wearing a sweater that was selected for you by the people in this room from a pile of stuff. Which brings us to our last element, the outsider. Can you please spell Gabbana? Hello? Andy enters Runway with a completely different set of values. Sometimes the outsider is actively opposed to the values of the world. This isn't really the case for Andy, but her lack of belief in Runway's ideology still creates plenty of dissonance and conflict. Runway is a fashion magazine, so interest in fashion is crucial. What makes you think I'm not interested in fashion? Here, Emily is indirectly signaling to Andy that at Runway, interest in fashion means internalizing specific ideas of what counts as good clothes, dressing yourself in them, and even being judgmental of those who don't share your more refined taste. Who is that sad little person? Are we doing a before and after piece I don't know about? We also see a contrast with how Andy's work ethic goes unnoticed by Miranda. Because this place, where so many people would die to work, you only deign to work. And you want to know why she doesn't kiss you on the forehead and give you a gold star. As mentioned before, Andy assumes that her diligence will be, if not rewarded, at least noticed and appreciated. But unless she meets Miranda's high standards and produces results, her efforts go completely unnoticed. As the movie goes on, we see Andy internalize these values and rise up through the fashion world. Whether a value system is portrayed as positive, negative, neutral, or controversial, these six elements are present in any story where a value system is important. I've broken down a few others here for comparison if you want to hit pause and look at them. Establishing a value system for your story world, while not always necessary, provides more texture and depth to the story, and creates a landscape for thematically charged conflict between characters and institutions with starkly different perspectives. And it allows for great lines like this. Well, I'm on this new diet. It's very effective. Well, I don't eat anything. And when I feel like I'm about to faint, I eat a cube of cheese. <laughs> well, it's definitely working. I know. I'm just one stomach flew away from my gold weight. Emily Blunt for the win. So, despite how much I enjoy and appreciate this movie, I've never claimed to have a great sense of fashion, which is why it's good that you can pick out whatever clothes or items or accessories you want with our logo on them on Zazzle. You can put it on shirts, mugs, hats, hoodies, anything you think it'll look good on. I thought this shirt color looked fine, but then again, you know, what do I know? Um, as always, you can listen to our podcast episodes on Devil Wears Prada and a whole bunch of other movies wherever you get your podcasts, including right here on YouTube. And if you like what we're doing, you can like this video, subscribe to us here, or subscribe to our Patreon, where you can listen to some bonus episodes on the Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy and the two Kingsman movies, for one dollar a month. Let us know what other movies you want us to cover in the comments, and thank you for watching. <laughs>